Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you've had a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Buckle up, hit that like button, and let's just jump into it. And the main thing we're gonna be talking about today is the coronavirus and everything it's been touching. But first, specifically, I know that there are some people panicking, but please, please, please check the sources on information that you're getting around the coronavirus. I'm not saying true factual information cannot come from influencers or Joe Blow on Twitter, Facebook, or whatever. Like, hold on a beat and see if the experts are actually saying that as well. For example, one post and claim that I saw really blow up came from Brother Nature. Massive influencer also in no way the only one sharing this stuff. Right, a lot of these claims are said to be attributed to a member of the Stanford Hospital Board or a doctor in Japan or something like that. And among the claims made here, everyone should ensure your mouth and throat are moist, never dry. Take a few sips of water every 15 minutes at least. Why? Even if the virus gets into your mouth, drinking water or other liquids will wash them down through your throat and into the stomach. Once there, your stomach acid will kill all the virus. If you don't drink enough water more regularly, the virus can enter your windpipe and into the lungs. That's very dangerous. And while I think there are plenty of other reasons to make sure that you're drinking water, this claim is false. This has been debunked, but once again, I'm not saying don't drink water. You should still drink water. It's just in general good for your health and during any infection. But like the specific claims that it's making here, not true. Also, the document claims drinking warm water is effective for all viruses. Try not to drink liquids with ice. That's not a thing. Also, in this fun little viral post of misinformation, there's the claim. Take a deep breath and hold your breath for more than 10 seconds. If you complete it successfully without coughing, without discomfort, stiffness, or tightness, etc., it proves there is no fibrosis in the lungs. Basically indicates no infection. No! That is not true. As Dr. Lauren Rauch, a doctor at Antelope Valley Hospital in Los Angeles who has a master's degree in epidemiology, says that's not true. That can check if you are anxious or have respiratory compromise, but not tell if you have coronavirus. Because once again, we've hit on this a number of times since we first started covering this, you may not have symptoms. And while some may look at that claim and go, well, what's the harm? Someone's gonna hold their breath for 10 seconds and uh, what? Well, one, it's a weird stance to defend spreading misinformation. Also two, you might have someone that incorrectly believes that they do not have the coronavirus. And so maybe that leads to further spread. And here's the thing, I'm not gonna villainize all the people sharing this and all the celebrities sharing this. People are panicking, people want to help, mistakes are going to get made. But where I do have issues with people are when those people get called out or actually in a very nice way get shown the truth leave up their incredibly viral posts like was the case with Brother Nature. And ultimately, uh, that's where we are with this right now. And so while often is not the case because the big scary claim usually gets way further than the fact check after, I really hope that shining a light on this can gain traction in its own way, but maybe even more importantly, get to the people that are even if they have good intentions, spreading misinformation about a really troubling issue. Because from the moment that I started filming this video to the moment that I'm ending filming this video, like that post has continued to go viral. So there's that. Uh, then the next thing we have to talk about with the coronavirus was Trump addressing the nation last night because uh, the way he used words did not necessarily reflect a an exact reality and at times were the exact opposite of what he said. So first up, Trump hit us with the Europe Travel ban. To keep new cases from entering our shores, we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The new rules will go into effect Friday at midnight. These restrictions will be adjusted subject to conditions on the ground. There will be exemptions for Americans who have undergone appropriate screenings, and these prohibitions will not only apply to the tremendous amount of trade and cargo, but various other things as we get approval. These restrictions will also not apply to the United Kingdom. All right, so just from that clip, there are two things that we have to talk about. All right, so one, Trump says we're suspending all travel from Europe, and then he mentions exemptions for Americans who have undergone appropriate screenings, but there is no other information connected to that. What are these screenings? Where are these screenings? And it's really not until about an hour later where the Department of Homeland Security releases a statement that we get a much clearer, more understandable picture, saying, today, President Donald J. Trump signed a presidential proclamation which suspends the entry of most foreign nationals who have been in certain European countries at any point during the 14 days prior to their scheduled arrival to the United States. And then adding, this does not apply to legal permanent residents, generally immediate family members of US citizens and other individuals who are identified in the proclamation. So the travel ban actually only affects foreign nationals who have been through the listed countries 14 days prior to trying to fly to the United States. There's no mention of appropriate screenings in this. 
There was also no mention of it Wednesday night when the White House listed all of the exempted groups. Right, that also didn't include anything about mandatory screening or testing. But the problem here is that it still caused a lot of confusion and chaos. For a little while, you had people that were getting on flights or had flights scheduled to go to Europe going, okay, wait, wait, am I not gonna be able to come back? Also abroad, according to reports in Europe, people just started buying up tickets and the prices were skyrocketing. Some reports saying that travelers were paying up to $20,000. And then the second thing we need to talk about from this statement is the part where Trump says, quote, these prohibitions will not only apply to the tremendous amount of trade and cargo. Well, it turns out that the president meant to say the exact opposite of that. Trump tweeting later after his address, please remember very important for all countries and businesses to know that trade will in no way be affected by the 30 day restriction on travel from Europe. The restriction stops people not goods. So it appears that maybe the answer to why you would say the exact opposite of what you meant is that possibly he was supposed to say, and these prohibitions will not apply to the tremendous amount of trade and cargo. Also, in the president's speech, he talked about the health insurance industry. Earlier this week, I met with the leaders of health insurance industry who have agreed to waive all co-payments for coronavirus treatments, extend insurance coverage, to these treatments and to prevent surprise medical billing. But what we're seeing now from reports after this announcement is no, that's not the case. With reports saying that insurers have agreed to waiving co-payments for testing, but not treatment. Right, so those were kind of the main three things that needed to be cleared up. We also saw Trump talk about economic measures, once again calling on Congress to provide relief to workers affected by the virus, including payroll tax cuts. But regarding other economic measures, he also said, to ensure that working Americans impacted by the virus can stay home without fear of financial harm. I will soon be taking emergency action, which is unprecedented, to provide financial relief. This will be targeted for workers who are ill, quarantined, or caring for others due to coronavirus. I will be asking Congress to take legislative action to extend this relief. And as far as emergency action, it appears that he's now instructed the Small Business Administration to provide loans in affected states and territories. Notably around this, Trump has also asked Congress to increase the funding for that assistance by $50 billion. Also saying that he's instructed the Treasury Department to defer tax payments for certain businesses and people affected by the virus. Adding that that move will put $200 billion of liquidity back into the economy. And that, was essentially it. Now, as far as the reaction to this, I mean, one, the timing around this was horrible, and I'm not, I'm not like placing that on Trump or something. What I mean is that there was a ton of coronavirus news just within like a 30 minute block. Within that 30 minute window, you had the president of the United States, who once again, just two days ago, was still kind of going, hey guys, the flu is way worse, announcing a month long European travel ban. Tom Hanks came out saying that he and Rita Wilson had tested positive for coronavirus and that the NBA was suspending their entire season. You learned today while filming that the NHL, MLS, and the ATP have all suspended their season and the NCAA has canceled March Madness. And also, not a sport, but a major announcement. We're seeing the news and now Disneyland is going to close. Now, as far as some of the more specific reactions, you, one, had people confused why the United Kingdom was not included in this ban. Right, it's not like they've dodged the coronavirus. There have been at least 459 known cases there. Also, as far as the European Union's reaction, they condemned the travel suspension, saying the decision was taken unilaterally and without consultation. People also saying that there probably was a time where travel suspension would have helped, but the coronavirus is already here, but it appears to be spreading domestically now. Also, as far as the US Congress, right, what's happening with legislation? Right after Trump's address, we saw House Democrats unveil a sweeping coronavirus release package that consisted of a number of measures, including a national paid sick leave program, free coronavirus testing, food security assistance, and expanded unemployment benefits. But very notably, not included in those measures was a payroll tax cut, with both House and Senate Democrats arguing that payroll tax cuts, which would lower the amount of certain federal taxes that are taken out of each worker's paycheck, do not help those hit the hardest. It is because the tax relief is largely aimed at helping those who have more money. And around this proposal, we saw Nancy Pelosi announce that the House is expected to vote on the legislation later today before they leave for a 10-day recess. But according to reports, Pelosi is still hashing out the details with the Trump administration and not everyone is on board. In fact, we saw House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy taking to Twitter this morning to slam Pelosi and the bill, saying the legislation that Speaker Pelosi introduced at 11 p.m. last night, written by her staff and her staff alone, and plans to vote on just 12 hours later is not only completely partisan, it is unworkable. We also saw Republican and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell slam the House bill, calling it an ideological wish list, and adding, I hope Senate Democrats will not block potential requests from our colleagues today to pass smaller, non-controversial pieces of legislation today. And while some Republican senators have expressed support for at least parts of the bill, it's unclear what the Senate will do here. Right, do they consider this package? Do they propose one of their own? But what we've seen so far, at least, is that this morning, McConnell announced the Senate will actually cancel its plans for the scheduled recess next week, and will instead work through it. Also, to complicate matters even more, we're now seeing
breaking news about the first case on Capitol Hill. Last night, Senator Maria Cantwell's office confirmed that one of her staffers tested positive for the coronavirus. With this, Cantwell announcing that she was closing her DC office to have it deep clean. Following that, we also saw other senators closing their DC offices as well. Right, so this potentially a big deal. There's a question of how widespread is this? You have thousands of people who work in the Capitol, obviously that including senators and Congress members. Obviously we're keeping our eyes glued there. Also, we should talk about the economy right now. The stock market has been taking a beating. I mean, hell, just after the Trump speech, Dow futures fell by 11 hundred points. And with this, we've seen the stock market enter what they call bear market territory, which is, is just a fancy way of saying that they've dropped 20% or more after recent highs. And in fact, this morning, those drops were so big that investors actually had to stop trading for 15 minutes, which th this is the second time this week they've had to do that, right? And they call this a circuit breaker. Th these breaks are kind of meant to help investors slow down, catch their breath, stop freaking out, really think about what they're doing. But it's now actually being reported that the Dow is seeing its worst day since 1987, right? Notably this coming after Trump yesterday told people, this is not a financial crisis. This is just a temporary moment of time that we will overcome together as a nation and as a world. Also, as far as some of the companies taking the biggest hits right now, I mean, you just look at major travel businesses like cruise lines and airlines. Royal Caribbean shares dropped nearly 27%. Carnival, 19%. United Delta and American Airlines all down more than 12%. Also, I know that I kind of mentioned it in passing, but I wanna bring it back to the NBA. Right, last night, essentially what we ended up seeing was the NBA postponed a game between the Utah Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I mean, this happened right before tip-off. Literally, the arena was packed. And this was reportedly because one of the players was being tested for the coronavirus, those results were about to come in. Once they did, we learned that that player was Rudy Gobert and that he had tested positive. Now the quick question around this was, holy shit, if Rudy has it, how many other people have it? Not only because you're talking about someone who participates in a game that's all about touching the same thing over and over. Not only because you have tons of people in the locker room, everyone's so close together, but because on Monday we saw this guy joking around, seemingly about the coronavirus, touching all the mics and the recorders and the table. Right, essentially like, ha ha, fuck the coronavirus. And apparently the coronavirus was like, Bet. And in fact, according to reports, Jazz players privately say that Rudy Gobert had been careless in the locker room, touching other players and their belongings, which may or may not be the reason why yesterday one of his teammates, Donovan Mitchell, also tested positive. Also, in addition to live events, we're seeing a number of movies being postponed, which I will say, it's genuinely interesting that because of this thing that is scaring everyone, right, the coronavirus, it's taking away a ton of the things that we use to distract us from how scary the world can be sometimes. But to that point, in the smallest positive thing ever, unless the power and the internet go out, the Philip DeFranco show will still be here for you. Made that joke about your grandmothers yesterday and way too many of you were like, yes, no, this is not a joke, we agree. But main point, that's where we are as of recording. This is still a developing situation, of course. As we've been saying for a while, you know, you, you'll get kind of these updates and then a lot will happen at once. But yeah, I hope you're well. I also, I hope these videos, I hope that they're not causing you to panic, that it's making you, you know, concerned and, and you're aware and you're an informed person. At the end of the day, I really hope this is helping, but yeah. Uh, those are the stories. I'd love, of course, love to know your thoughts. This is the end. And hey, of course, if you like today's video, remember to hit us with a like. If you're new here, you don't want to miss these daily weekday videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're not 100% filled in, you can definitely check out that brand new fantastic podcast I did with Daniel Sloss, or maybe you missed the last Philip DeFranco show you want to catch up. You can click or tap right there to watch either of those. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you next time. I hope you like the video. Subscribe if you like it.